Hi, welcome back to Feminism on Trial. Men have been known to um, call out for their mothers when they're dying. Why do they do that? They do that because that is the only person from whom they've ever received unconditional love. So in that moment of, I don't know what that moment's like. I don't think, I mean, you can't really know what that's like until you're going through it, but we can, we can imagine that moment of um, pain, uh, fear, um, just in that moment of where everything is reduced to what is true, because I suppose when you're in the, when you're facing death, not a lot really matters. Only the mo very most important things matter. And at the risk of sounding uh, <laughs> too idealistic or I guess, silly or simplistic love at the end of the day matters I mean it doesn't really matter you know what kind of car you had or those sorts of trivial things in life I think when you're in your last moments the things that truly matter are are going to rise to the surface and love I cannot think of anything more important than that and men cry out for their mothers. I was actually having this a conversation about this. Well, it wasn't about death, but it was about men, women, gender politics with a, um, a men's rights advocate who he has been in this movement since its inception in the 70s. And we were discussing differences in men and women, and we were talking about how men cry out for their mothers when they're dying because it is the only time that they've ever known unconditional love. And I asked the gentleman, what if they didn't have a good relationship with their mother? What if they didn't have love from their mother? And there was a heavy silence in our conversation and he said well then it's very sad and I guess they were never loved and that is terribly terribly sad and also infuriating because it shouldn't be that way. These are men who, you know, it's not like these are just men who've been single their whole lives. You know, these are men who are married or who have been married, who have been told by a woman, I love you, right? And yet, at the end of their lives, in those last moments, they call out for their mother. They're not calling out for their wife. Why? Because they know that is not, that is not love. They're not getting love from the, the women who proclaim to love them. They're not, and they know it. Why? Women, if they're still watching, are like, but I love him, but I love him. Girlfriend, you don't know what love is. You think love is a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Think about the way a mother loves her son for a second. Okay, so you've seen this, like, son messes up, son gets bad grades, son wrecks the car, son 
goes to jails, whatever, right? The mother is like, that's my baby. No matter what, that's my baby. He'll always be my baby. She'll even deny it. She'll be like, you know, oh, make excuses for him, whatever. She's always going to be the mother. No matter what, I'm your mother. No matter what, I love you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I'm not criticizing that. I'm, I'm not here to say that they shouldn't do that. What I'm saying is wives, girlfriends, partners, stop using the word love if you're not using it in the sense that it is unconditional. Now, here's the next excuse. I can hear it because I, I still have that woman brain. It's torture. Anyway, so the woman brain's like, yeah, well, I might still love him, but that doesn't mean I have to live with him or that doesn't mean I have to put up with that. Like you can even get the neck going. That's, I'm not doing that for real. I'm doing an impersonation, but it's disturbing how easily it comes again. I still know how to think like a woman it, yeah no you don't have to sure you don't have to you you can leave you know you can say well I love him I still love him but there's no buts there's no buts you love is a verb okay and here's other women like, well, he was abusing me. Well, it wasn't good for my mental health. Blah, 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 blah. Sure, you're a perfect angel. You're, you're wearing your apron. You bake him cookies. You're just perfect. You're just an innocent victim. Baloney? No. 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 You're disagreeable. You're ungrateful. You're masculine. You want to argue. You have to have the last word. You can't, you can't defer to him in anything. You emasculate him. And then he's gonna, you know, he might stand up for himself and then, and then he's abusive. So no, don't start with that. Don't even come at me with that. You women don't know how to love. And that is why men cry out for their mothers because at the end of the day, they know. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, men know that if they lose their job or don't get the next promotion, you know, don't or can't buy you the big house in the fancy neighborhood, then you're out of there. And God forbid they actually have a big mess up. You know, like if, if they were to cheat or have a relationship with someone else that hurt, that hurt you then you're out the door. You, you, women have this list of deal breakers. Love, there's no deal breakers in love and there's no deal breakers in commitment. People always want to know what's the secret to a happy marriage? You know what the secret is? There's no such thing. Do I mean there aren't successful marriages? No, that's not what I mean. Do I mean you can't be happy in a marriage? No, that's not what I mean. But when you see like grandma and grandpa and they've been married 60 years, don't assume that those were easy 60 years. Don't assume that nobody had a massive mistake. Don't assume that it was just hunky dory, that there weren't times when they really wanted to go one or the other or both. 
there's no such thing as that type of a marriage. But what there is, is value. That marriage that they fought to stay in, that, you know, when you have something to say and you're like, ooh, I can really win this argument. Shut it. That's hard to do. That's hard. You know, when you're in the right, and he's messed up, and you're justified, and you just don't take, don't take the opportunity to hit him, strike him down, uh, take half his stuff, take his kids away from him. Don't do that. Don't do that. Actually have compassion for the person that you claim to love. Figure out what's going on. Get to the bottom of it. It takes two to tango for everything. It always does. And you work through stuff. And you, f you fight to stay together through that. That's what, you know, those 60 years look like. You're like, what's the secret to a happy marriage? The secret is there's no such thing. The secret is love is not about feelings. It's not. It, it's not about a level of attraction. It's not a spark. Is there attraction? Yes. Is there a spark? Sure. But, you know, time takes some of that away, you know? You're not always going to look like you did when you were 22. He's not always going to look like that, you know? There has to be another level. And women understand that with their children. They love their children. But... They don't love their man. They don't. And men know it, and it's so sad. Breaks my heart. So, we women need to be taught, we need to be told. Love isn't a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is a commitment. Love is a series of decisions. Love is, at the end of the day, love is unconditional. And the decisions you make, based on it being unconditional, don't include, well, I don't have to still live with him, or I don't still have to put up with him, I can still love, but no, 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 no. Love is unconditional, you work through it. You don't think about what you deserve. There's no such thing as that. You work through it. And if you're a wise enough and disciplined enough woman, which I know doesn't really exist anymore, but if you're a grandma and you were those things and you, you lasted the 60 years of marriage and you have that, it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And I doubt that there are any of those women that are ever like, gee, I wish I would have left 20 years ago when he did this or he said that. Gee. I wish I would have left him for my career. No. Nobody's saying that. So, yeah. We need to do better. Women need to do better. And I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, you guys, that you... 
I'm telling you something you already know. <sighs> Man, you do actually deserve better. You, you do. You, you so deserve better. I don't like the word deserve because of the way that women use it to say all the things that they deserve, but men, you, you deserve, you deserve love. You certainly earn it. You certainly earn it in, in these marriages and you don't, you don't get it. So don't forget to uh, like this video. It helps. I know YouTube is like <laughs> trying to make me invisible. And don't forget to subscribe too. I think it's unsubscribing people because I think I probably would have more than 678 subscribers if uh, the censorship overlords didn't want to hide me. I guess I, uh, I say controversial things like men deserve love. Wow. Imagine a world where it's controversial to say that men deserve love and they're not getting it. Something to think about. Thanks. Have a good day. Be well.